Welcome back for another devotion. It's once again good to be with you in this format as we share the Word of God um, using some of the tools that the Lord has graciously given us in this time, and we're grateful for those things. We seek to grow tall in Christ. That means we know Him better, we are following Him more closely as the Holy Spirit enables us, but more than anything, as we grow tall, it's embracing him as our Lord and Savior and realizing that all we have is a gift from him. Our passage today comes from Psalm 86, 8 through 13. I'm Paul Went, the Director of Christian Education at St. John in Kendallville, if you don't know who I am. Our passage today starts this way. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord nor are there any works like yours. God alone is God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He alone is God. There are no others. God created the universe. God created me. God created you. Even more, God has provided this incredible gift of salvation in Christ Jesus. We live in a broken world, and truth be told, we broke it. As we live in this broken world, we, if we're honest, realize, boy, I've done things and said things, or I haven't done things I should have done that really put me in a bad place. And if we look at God's law, we realize we're in trouble. God didn't leave us there. He sent his son, Jesus. And Jesus, fully human as we are, completely identification with us, walked in the will of his Father, lived that perfect life that none of us can, and then died an innocent death in our place to pay for our rebellion, our brokenness. And as he did that, not only did he die and was he buried, but he rose again from the dead so that we could know that as he suffered in our place and as he died in our place, he paid all of our debt and now has made a way for us to be fully and completely reunited with the God who loves us and who made us. That's incredibly good news. That's, that, that's why there aren't any works like those that God does. And even when the psalmist composed these words by the power of the Holy Spirit. They were looking forward to that promised Messiah. We in the New Testament era know his name and know what he's done. Isaiah talks about our God this way, the fact that he's unique. This is God speaking through the prophet Isaiah. I know I am the Lord. I am the Lord. There is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord. There is no other. I form light. I create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. Again, in those moments of honesty, we really would like to be in charge of things. And sometimes we'd like just other people to do what we want them to do because we think that would be best. That's an expression of our broken, sinful selves. One way to look at it that we are a little uncomfortable looking at it this way is to say, you know, really, I would just like to be God. I'd like to run the whole world and the whole universe, and it would be much better than it is right now. The reality is, is God is God alone. He's much smarter than me. He's much more powerful than me. He is eternal. He is much more loving than I am. All of those things. And we're not we're invited to humbly submit to him. We're invited to trust him. Our psalm continues. 
All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You are God alone. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't see all sorts of people worshiping God now. There are many that don't. People certainly are invited. The Holy Spirit is busy inviting everybody to come and, and see how much God loves them. And some people, the barrier is, I think God hates me, or I think, you know, God is, is just this stern judge waiting to get me. And none of that is, is what the, how the Bible paints him. Does God bring consequences for rebelling against him? Yes, he does. But his default position, his normal place of being, is he loves us. You see the cross in the background of this picture? That's one of the wondrous things that he has done. He sacrificed himself for us out of love. We do know, though, that there's going to come a day when all will worship before God. St. Paul says it this way in Philippians chapter 2. Therefore, God has exalted Jesus and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There will come a day when even the devil will bow his knee and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, those of us who are God's people, who know Jesus as Lord and Savior, will bow in reverent love and wonder and anticipation of being with him forever. Those who do not will bow in shame and horror and the terror of what is to come for them. God has, in fact, done wondrous things. God the Father has brought salvation for all people through Jesus Christ. People do not go to hell because of their sin. You don't go to hell because of the bad things you've done. You go to hell because of unbelief. You see, Jesus has paid for all that sin in full. Let me say that again. No one goes to hell because of the bad things they've done or do or say or the good things they've failed to do. People go to hell because they've rejected Christ in unbelief as Lord and Savior. Jesus has fully paid for all the sin of every human being. Salvation is found in Christ Jesus alone. We, as God's people, live in this salvation. We have this treasure to share with those who don't yet know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And it's the Holy Spirit who changes hearts. That's not our job. That takes the pressure off. What we have is a treasure to share. Incredible. Incredible. The psalmist goes on in response to this, teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. As God's people, we respond to his love for us in Jesus Christ by wanting to follow Jesus. As God's people, we respond to God's love in Christ by desiring to know and live out of God's truth. It's like we want to know Help me to live your way. Jesus came to give us an abundant life. And that abundant life is full of joy and peace, even in the midst of chaos, right? As God's people, we respond to God's love in Christ Jesus by asking God for a united will. No double-mindedness. No, wow, well, I'll follow God in this, but not in that. So that we can live in that peace and that joy, in reverent awe of him. You know, this is what it's like us to do as God's people. And yes, we are a work in process. None of us lives this perfectly. And yet we're called to live that way. What an incredible, incredible promise. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. 
As God's people, we give thanks. As God's people, we are grateful for all of God's blessings, large and small. Salvation in Christ, that's the big one. Our forgiveness of sins so that we can have peace with God. A place to belong here as God's people that also goes on forever in heaven. What we need to live, food, clothes, family, a way to earn a living, all of that. The flower that we notice that just gives us joy, or the laugh of a child that gives us joy, or those things that, those gifts that God has given us, those abilities that when we use them, we experience his joy. All of those things we thank God for and we're grateful for. All the glory belongs to God alone. Our psalmist goes on. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. Sheol is a big Hebrew word that means death. In great times, God's steadfast love is with us. In normal, everyday, nothing to write home about times, God's steadfast love is with us. In chaotic times, God's steadfast love is with us. In times of deep distress and anguish, God's steadfast love is with us. Do you get it? God's steadfast love is with us. He's rescued us even from death itself. As his people, he fills us with this steadfast love, full to overflowing, so that those around us might experience his love too. That's part of his plan. That's part of why he still has us living and breathing here. So that we can reach out with his love, with that love of Christ, to all the people that he sends across our path. As we treat them with respect, as we treat them with humility, as we treat them with welcome, knowing that God created them knowing that Jesus died for them. That's powerful calling in life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bless and praise you that there is no one like you, that you alone are God, and that you love us with a bigger and deeper and broader and higher love than we can possibly imagine. Thank you as we experience your love Remove the things in our life that get in the way of your love. Help us to come ever closer to you in our relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And let your love flow through our lives and touch those lives around us so that many more may come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' strong name, amen. If this has been helpful for you, please share it. Um, We'd love for you to do that. We're also here, Pastor and I would love to pray with you, talk with you, if that uh, is something that would be helpful to you. Um, if you don't know how to get a hold of us, the contact tab on, tab on our website, sjlc.net, is there for that purpose. Um, would love to have you here. We continue to put these devotions out at this time uh, as a way of connecting with people who, for whatever reason, um, can't be here. And we pray that these are helpful to you in your walk with Jesus. It's been good to be with you. Till next time.